What is up, ladies and gentle nerds? It's your boy, Graham, also known as HamHawks42 on the internet, and here we are with another exciting edition of Overthinking MTG. So we're on the gatherer, let's go ahead and scroll down, hit that random card button, everybody's favorite button, and let's see what will we be talking about for the next 10 minutes. All right, today we have landed on Tranquil Thicket. All right, so here is actually kind of an oldie but a goodie. We've seen this come up a couple of times, um, or at least I've seen cards like this. And actually, I referenced this in a, in a previous episode. I believe it was Slippery Karst, I believe. Uh, we talked a lot about mana bases in that one. Anyway, this is a land. Uh, the particular version that we're looking at here is from Modern, is that Modern, Hora uh, modern Horizons? Um, yes, Modern Horizons, not Modern Masters. That's the other modern thing that exists in the world. But no, this one is from Modern Horizons. It was printed as an uncommon. And this particular land, it is, um, so it's just a land. There's no super type, no subtype. You know, it's not a forest, not an island, not a plains. It's also not a basic. It's not an artifact, none of that nonsense. It's just Tranquil Thicket. It's a land. It enters the battlefield tapped. It taps for one green, or you can cycle it for one green. So it is a forest that comes into play tapped, but if you don't need it, you can cycle it away. So in the early game, it's not great because you are you are giving up some tempo. Um, however, in the late game, it's not a dead draw because in a situation where you don't need a land and you really need another card in your hand, if you draw this, you can just pay one, throw it away, and get something else. And so... In that respect, it's pretty nice. It's actually really great. In uh, the, These cards are staples in commander mana bases because you can... Well, just because the variance is so high, throwing one of these in whatever colors you have, there's a really good chance you're not going to be able to efficiently hit your... You know, really efficiently curve out anyway. So the tempo loss in the early game isn't as important as it is in other constructed formats. Meanwhile, the ability to make sure you don't get a dead draw late could be a really important factor in the game. So they're they're just staples in commander mana bases. They actually appear in a lot of the commander precon products um, for that exact reason, along with the cycling lands that cycle for two generic instead of just the one of any color. So Triangle Thicket is the green one and potentially one of the better of these lands actually because uh, again, in formats like Commander, green ramps so hard and gets access to so much mana that in the early game, there's a really good chance you're not going to need... You know, green weenies isn't exactly a thing. I mean, there are elves, I suppose, so there are some archetypes where you can be playing low-to-the-ground creatures. But in a lot of cases, green is going to be ramping, building up a ton of mana anyway, and so being able to just... You get rid of one land, one more land, because there's a really good chance it's going to be redundant. But in the case it's not, it's going to help you prevent being mana screwed. So all in all, not bad. I also kind of dig the artwork on this particular one. It is, it is a painting by Noah Bradley. Looks like it was painted uh, with oil. I could be wrong on that, but you know it could have been done digitally. I don't know, but it's a gorgeous piece. It uh, it's showing a forest. It looks like it's actually a pretty well it's a it's a thicket meaning that um it's a pretty thin you know there are, the, the trees are pr really loose uh it looks like there's kind of a big clearing and in the foreground there's very prominently a fallen tree you know it, it's a tree on its side which i think is kind of lovely for a land that comes into play tapped you know it's just kind of perfect a little on the nose if anything but it is a lovely image. You know, it's just, it's very natural. You see, oh, sorry about that. Imogen was falling off my lap. Kind of awkward, but well, here we are. Anyway, so yeah, the tree being on the side, a little on the nose, but that's fine. I think it's fun. Um, and actually, I think in the original printing with, I believe it was the Onslaught block, um, there may have actually been a tree on its side as well. So they, I don't know if that was intended for Tranquil Thicket specifically, or if that was maybe a forest that they decided to turn into Tranquil Thicket. Because I'm sure when these when this artwork is commissioned, I would be shocked if the folks who were commissioned to to um, put out, you know, the 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 lands, I would be really surprised if you know Noah Bradley, the the artist who did this particular piece, I I'd be really shocked if he was told specifically that it was going to be Tranquil Thicket. I bet he just submitted 
you know, a number of forests or a number of basic lands. And they took one of the forests and thought it would work well for Tranquil Thicket. That's my guess. Again, that, like a lot of things here, that's a wild guess. I have absolutely no idea how that submission process was handled. Um, this particular scene is definitely of a thicket, and it looks pretty darn tranquil. So I don't know. Maybe this was commissioned specifically for Tranquil Thicket. I don't know. In any case... Yeah, so these cycling lands are pretty cool, pretty interesting. They're they're very useful. They're they're also pretty straightforward, pretty simple, and like I mentioned, they've been reprinted to death. They've been in every Commander Precon um, since they started, I'm pretty sure. And th when they were originally printed, if I'm not mistaken, I believe they were actually a common. And the reason that they were printed was because back in the day there were a lot of cycling payoffs, and so it made sense for cycling to be on lands. And the downside of it coming into play tapped basically meant that it wasn't going to be wonderful and really high-end competitive stuff, especially nowadays with um, all the different types of mana base options that we have at our disposal. You know, right now, if you want your land to come into play tapped, you can have it tapped for three different types of mana. So something like this, if you're not going to get benefit from the cycling, it's really not worth even a second glance. And the other thing that I want to point out, which I believe I mentioned in the other episode where we were talking about mana bases, it does not have a basic land type. You cannot fetch for this. You can't pull it up with, um, you know, with like a rampant growth or a, uh, a far seek. That's the one where you could normally, like you can grab, um, you know, the horizons, you can grab the shock lands, those types of things with Farseek because you look for a swamp or a mountain or an island or a plains. And I guarantee you when they first made that card back in the original Ravnica, they had never imagined that you'd be able to grab those other cards. You know, I, I don't know, as, as always, I'm not sure what's actually going on at Wizards. I don't know that that was... Um, I'm fairly certain that if they were to have, if they were to print Farseek today, I mean, it's already been established. It's already out there. It is already what it is. Um, I'd imagine it would be named, or the the wording on it would be, search your library for a basic land, like a basic non-forest land, which is a little awkward, but you grab a basic land that is one of the other types. So I, I suspect that that's ultimately kind of what they were going for with that, making it actually a worse rampant growth instead of a significantly better one, which is what it ended up being. But in this situation, like if Tranquil Thicket was considered a basic land or it was considered a forest, and so something like that where you fetch it out of your library, where you'd put it into play tapped anyway, being able to just throw it into play tapped then would actually be pretty great because that's a way of... Um, you know, that's the way of kind of getting around the downside, because it was going to do that anyway. But you can't do that. You know, it's not a basic land. Uh, also, funnily enough, like, once it comes into play, it just comes into play tapped, and then after that, it functions just like a forest. However, it's not a forest. So cards that target forests make it not a forest. Uh, Blood Moon hits this. You know, like, Blood Moon would turn this into a mountain, <laughs> which is kind of just, it's awkward. But it does. Um, also, any effect that allows you to target non-basic lands, you can hit Tranquil Thicket with those because it's technically not a basic land. Um, also, cards like Back to Basics, that monkey with non-basic land. Well, this guy is a victim of those as well because it's just... Even though you could call this land... I mean, if I was to think of adjectives that describe this once it's on the battlefield... Basic comes to mind, but as far as the rules are concerned, it is not a basic land. It is just a land that taps for one green. So it's like a forest, but it's not a forest. Um, yeah, so it's one of those things where, like, it's fairly straightforward. The only real benefit that you're going to get with cards like this is the ability to throw it away late in the game. And uh, I got to tell you, I have had enough games especially in standard nowadays, which makes me a little bummed that these aren't standard legal, frankly, because I've had so many games at where, I've, where I've flooded out, and, you know, I just needed to top deck my one threat, and it was going to be game over, and I top decked a, an island. And it's like, well, neat, you know? Well, if I had top decked, you know, a Tranquil Thicket, well, or a Lonely Sandbar if I'm playing blue, and just been able to, like, pay one, throw it away, and just try again... That could be the difference between a win or a loss, especially in those competitive games. So there's a place for this. I don't think I'd put four in the deck because the moment you put four 
if I'm in a 60 card, one to one competitive kind of setup, and I'm really going for the win, if I have these in there, I'm only having one, maybe two, because that late game benefit that you get out of it comes at a pretty steep cost in the early game. So I want to make sure I can hit my early my early plays. That said, you know the the main deck that I'm running right now is a Grixis Fires deck. Well, Fires of Invention, you end up free casting a lot of your spells anyway, and they all have fairly high mana costs. And you just need lands in play in order to trigger things off. They don't need to be untapped. You don't need to tap them for mana, but they do need to be there. So a card like this would be great in that situation because there is nothing worse than having everything on the board and all you need to do is top deck a creature. Like, you know, top deck some hasty creature or some way to, like, remove a threat and you top deck a land. That is such a bad feeling. Well, Tranquil Thicket is one of those lands where you can top deck that it's like well okay this could have been better but i can work with this uh unlike when you top deck a forest and it's just like well i guess i'm just gonna look at this now and pass my turn and then lose to whatever you're gonna do yeah so all in all these cards are fine they're they're an interesting utility piece you know i have a number of these from when i was playing back in onslaught and you know i find places for them there are a few you know a few casual decks where they certainly don't hurt you know, just like anything, you know, too much of a good thing can really can really hurt you. So I'd use them in, in moderation. Yeah. Um, but all in all, solid little piece. Definitely good in commander. Perfectly playable. If you're having a if you have a monocolor commander, I, there's no reason not to have one of these of the appropriate color in that deck. There just isn't. I mean I mean I'm sure there's examples, but by and large, it wouldn't hurt to have one. Just because worst case scenario, late in the game. Just chuck it. All right, guys. I have been Graham, also known as Hamhox42 on the internet, and presumably I will continue to be so going forward. This has been Overthinking MTG. Thanks for joining me. I stream every morning, every weekday morning, 5.30 to 6.30 over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Hamhox42. And I'm here every day, and actually every day, including Saturday and Sunday, um, on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. So thanks so much for hanging out. I'll catch you tomorrow or in a minute if you're binge listening to this right after the anchor commercial. All right, later.